I am Bridget Lake, president of the Oviedo Winter Springs Regional Chamber of Commerce, and we are here with Emily Bonilla. She is running for County Commissioner District 5, serving Orange County. Our premier virtual Eastside Regional Hobnob is presented by Lucas Land Group, an Oviedo-based family-run business with interest throughout Central Florida. Our sponsor, Duke Energy, and our radio sponsor, 96.5 WDBO. Now, before we get into our conversation, let's watch a quick commercial from our sponsor, Duke Energy. Across Florida, we're listening to customers like you, and we're working hard to build the brighter energy future you and your family deserve. That's why we're making smart investments in the grid to improve reliability and prevent outages, to use more clean, renewable energy like solar, and to give you better control over your energy use today and in the years ahead. We're Duke Energy, and we're building a smarter energy future for you. And now we're back with Emily Bonilla, running for County Commissioner District 5. She is one of our Eastside Regional Hobnob candidates. Emily, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing great. It's been very busy, but very inspirational, the times that we're in. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, well, I was born in New York, and I was raised in Massachusetts. I, I've, so I'll just um, tell a little bit about what I wanted to do as a child when I grew up, because a lot of people ask me, well, did you want to be an elected official? You know, no, I didn't. Um, I actually wanted to be a successful businesswoman, like literally a successful businesswoman <laughs> when I grew up. Um, I was always entrepreneurial. I always had the entrepreneurship in me. Um, I would try to sell my toys on the front porch, um, whatever toys I did have, um, tried to do a lemonade stand. Um, I would also, with my friends, we were, we were growing up in poverty as well. So, you know, that, you know, it's funny, we used the money to buy candy at the, the corner store that we had. Um, wasn't exactly penny candy. I'm not that, I'm not, you know, not that aged, but um, we did have, you know, nickel candy and the really good candy was like a dime. But um, we would collect cans and we would bring it into recycling. We'd get money for that and we'd use that money um, for some candy. Sometimes because, you know, I was hungry because we were raised in poverty, I would instead spend money on like um, Chef Berardi cans or, you know, those SpaghettiOs cans so I would have something to eat. Um, but yeah, being a successful business, I'll never forget that. <laughs> it's just so funny. What do you want to be when you grow up? A successful businesswoman. Um, so I went to high school and we had a class for business and marketing and I definitely wanted to be in that class um, to learn all about it. The, the problem was that the teacher wasn't showing up to class, um, wasn't teaching it. And I was a very serious student. Like I had mostly A's, some B's, but I was always an honor roll student, um, so I took my education very seriously because that's why my family said that in order to get out of what we were living in, like education was the way out. And I had to be the first one to go to college and do that. So the teacher wasn't showing up. And like I said, I take my education seriously. Show, so I went to the, the principal's office and you know, I was like, I need to change my class. And they were like, well, I did tell them why teacher wasn't happy with me for the next um, four years of, this, of high school. <laughs> Ended up being the cheerleading um, coach too, which I was on the cheerleading team, so that didn't go so well. <laughs> um, but I, I want to say, I say that story only because unfortunately, that had actually pushed me back in my life because um, I wanted to be a successful businesswoman. Here was this class that was supposed to do that, and she taught all the business and marketing classes. Um, so I didn't take any of them through high school. Instead, um, I actually switched that class to psychology. Um, and because my family felt that, you know, in poverty, you only know about a couple of things that you could become when you grow up, a lawyer or a doctor or a teacher. And they wanted someone to be successful, make money or whatever. So they wanted me to become a doctor. 
Uh, well, I faint at the sight of blood. <laughs> so that wasn't really going to go so over so well, but I was like, okay, I'm going to become a doctor. Um, so that psychology class I really liked and I was really interested in it. It was, it was great. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. So I thought I would become a psychiatrist. At least that way I didn't have to see blood, but I'm still a doctor. Um, so I went to college double majoring in psychology and biology to eventually go to medical school. Um, but, you know, that really wasn't my passion. Um, also, I loved to write um, as a kid. That was, I was so passionate about that. Um, I wrote a lot of poems that my friends just loved. And so that was something else that I was delving into and liking. I got involved in, in modeling as well, which I really enjoyed. So I did take some classes in Boston, um, which I would drive there myself. I was 16, had my car, you know. Um, as soon as I turned 16, I got a job too. Um, I was always really self-sufficient, like really taking care of myself, paid all my own bills. Um, but that that dream was kind of cut short as well because my family didn't want me driving to Boston myself. They felt it was unsafe. So even though I had paid for the classes, which I still had to pay for, even though I had to quit, um, <laughs> that dream was kind of cut short. Um, but then I, you know, in high school also met my husband, <laughs> sophomore year of high school. And, you know, I was going to college, um, came down to UCF for school. And that was in 1995. Oops, I'm aging myself now. <laughs> that was in 1995. Um, got homesick, actually, went back to Massachusetts. Um, so I didn't really finish out that first semester. And went, you know, at that time, continued double majoring, going to community college. And me and my now husband, but... Um, fiance at that time, dating, whatever, we decided to move down to Florida together in 1998. And since then, I've just been here. Um, and then we were going to have our first child. And at that point, I was like, okay, I want to be able to tell my child, like um, my grandfather, like he always told me, you could do whatever you want, you know, go for it. Um, he told me, you're really smart. He was so like, you know, telling me I'm the smart person who could really succeed and do whatever I want in life. Um, so I wanted to be able to tell my children the same thing, but then I was feeling really guilty because I really didn't want to become a doctor. <laughs> it wasn't really my passion. So um, I'm here pregnant. I'm thinking about this. I'm like, how am I going to tell my kid that you could do whatever you want in life when I'm not really doing that for myself? So I thought about what I was really passionate about, and I went back to my writing and, you know, the modeling, which I did some acting there too. Um, we did, um, I was in the, the movie Civil Action as an extra <laughs> that was filmed in Boston uh, with John Travolta. It was really exciting. <laughs> so you'll see me in that movie just a little bit if you ever watch it. Um, so I decided to go to Valencia Community College for film technology and with a focus in writing screen screenplays for movies. And so that's what I did. So I'm here pregnant in that program, very intense program, by the way, too. And I'm going through it. It was a two-year program, and I had to also help pay the bills, um, you know, my husband was working, we were both going to school, but we had to pay for rent and bills and everything. So with the intensive program that was, it was like a 12 hour day, seven day a week program. And it, well, actually five day a week. So it was really hard though to find a job when you're, you know, at sc in school, you know, for the whole day and you can't really work. You only had the weekends, but then I had bills to pay. So I, I learned that, well, I could do wedding videography on the weekends and you make a good amount of money in one day. So I did that to get through school, be able to pay the bills. And then I finished Valencia Community College and I was going to transfer to UCF. I didn't get accepted into the film program, but I wanted to focus on writing anyway. So I went into the English, um, English creative writing track and to get my bachelor's there. And I also was 
doing a lot of the wedding videography and that was really picking up. Um, and I thought, well, why don't I start a business? So I started a wedding business around that time and that wedding business became a, suc a successful business woman <laughs> in that wedding business. I learned so much and I did that for 10 years. Um, it was great. And it was something that I decided to do also because if you really wanted to make it in the film industry, the place to go was Hollywood, California. But I didn't want to raise my kids in, Cal in Hollywood, California. All my life, I had been raised in the city. Um, it wasn't something that I wanted to raise my kids in. I wanted to live in a more country setting, which is why I moved to Orange County and why I loved it here. And I wanted to raise my kids here. And quite frankly, I want to die here in Florida. <laughs> you know, I, don't want, I don't want to go anywhere else. Um, so that's why I chose to stay here and start a business instead of moving to Hollywood. And so I finished UCF, running my business, um, loved it, ready to have my second child because we wanted to have another kid. And then my first kid we wanted to put into sports, which was on the weekends. Well, weddings are on the weekends. I have a wedding business, but, you know, didn't work out with putting my kid in sports. So my, me and my husband talked about it and we decided, well, we'll close the business, um, have our second child. You know, I had money put aside in the bank, you know, to hold us over through the pregnancy and everything. Um, we closed the business, went ahead, had our second child, and I've done business consulting since then. I decided to go back to school for my master's degree, internet marketing, because that was the bet that my most favorite part of the whole running the business was the marketing. Um, and then I, I ended up working for Full Sail University, um, consulting and, well, for graduates, who are transitioning from full sale going out into the workplace or helping them start their own businesses if they wanted to. So it was, it was a great job. I really loved it. It was in career development. Um, also got to work with businesses that wanted to relocate to Orange County as well and talk to them about the workforce that we had available here and, and what we can offer them. So it was a great experience. Um, I really loved it. And you know, I'm just trying to give you my background of who I am, you know, without going to the politics yet, but that's where the politics started coming in. So I'll just let you ask any more questions that you have. If you want to start asking me about that, how did I get into politics? I'll let you ask the questions. Well, that's some great background. I guess with your, your challenges growing up, you were talking about the, um, the challenges you faced when you had, you know, economic challenges, um, how did that experience really help you in the political arena when you, you became commissioner? Well, it really has helped me because I have a perspective that a lot of people I feel um, may not have. So I'll, I'll say that it's, if you look at people who grew up in that situation, not all of them get to become successful businesswomen. You know, um, some get distracted and end up in other areas of their life. They may end up in jail even. You know, it's, it's really hard as a, a person of color, person of color and a woman to be able to succeed in this society. It really is, especially starting from that position of poverty where everything in your life is really stacked against you. And people may look at me and they're like, well, you made it. You worked really hard. So why isn't, why can't other people do that? I will tell you, it is almost impossible. When people meet me too and they really learn about the person I am, they're like, you're one of a kind. You're a diamond in the rough. Like, it's really hard to find anyone like you. Um, and I mean, I took personality tests. We look at my personality. I'm only, only 2% of the population with my personality. Um, so I have overcome a lot in my life as a child. Like, never mind, like, as an adult. Like, by the time I was like, 10 years old, I went through a lot that a lot of adult, adults could not even imagine that people have gone through. Like I had a maturity level that adults 
would not understand because of what I went through, but also because I feel, I believe in nurture and nature. Um, I feel that, and I, hey, I have two kids. I could tell you they are born with their personalities, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like seriously. Um, so I was born with a certain personality, I believe, that did assist me to get to where I am. But I also had other, I want to say, people in my life that also helped me to get to where I am. Like I mentioned my grandfather. Like, I really hope I don't tear up here, but because um, <laughs> he's dead, you know, he passed away. Um, and that was very hard on me in that time. I was just starting college, you know, when he had passed away. And he really was. And I'm... <laughs> Wow, you really did make this interview personal, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but he was a very, um, a, I'll just say very complex person in my life because he was the, really the only person at that time until I was like in middle school that was there who showed me love, who told me that I could be anything I want to be when I grew up, who told me that I could do it. The only person everyone else in my life was a negative um, influence on me everyone he was the only one and but he was always there with me and so then in middle school though I had some teachers that really looked out for me and I didn't really understand like how influential and impactful they were on my life until like later on um, because they made sure that I was in getting the right classes. They made sure that when I was going into high school, like I signed up for the right, because um, you had different levels of classes in, in high schools. So they, they made sure I was in the top levels, which and without them, I wouldn't have known about that. Because my husband, like I said, we met in high school. So until after I met him, I didn't understand how that worked. Um, so when I met him in sophomore year of high school, I learned that his teachers did not look out for him. He was placed into the bottom level classes. And he was, you know, capable of so much more. So I actually had him go and change his classes into more of the higher level ones. Um, and then his dad was mad at me because his grades dropped. I'm like, his grades dropped because he's taking more challenging courses. It's not because, of, you know, I did anything to, you know, mess him up. <laughs> Always blame the girlfriend, right? <laughs> but, um, so, so, yeah, so they looked out for me to make sure that I was going into the classes that I needed to go into. And then in high school, there were teachers looking out for me, too, to make sure that I was on my way to college. And I did what I had to do. You bring a really interesting point. And I was actually about to get to your grandfather. Not only did he encourage you, but he also seemed as part mentor to you. And I bring that up because um, there are probably others that inspire you as well as you inspiring others. Do you happen to be a mentor to anyone right now? Well, whatever I have the chance, I, I t tr let me back up a little bit. So I, I really want to help people and I really try to advise people. Um, I've learned though, unless people ask for it, they really don't want it hear, you know, all the truth, you know, the ugly truth about maybe like, this is what you're doing wrong. Here's how you should improve this. People don't want to hear what they're doing wrong. Um, so I've, I've had to kind of learn <laughs> how to mentor people um, and do it in a way that they don't know that I'm doing it because <laughs> people don't really like getting unsolicited advice. But um, with my grandfather, I, I tell you, like I said, it was complex. Um, he wasn't a good guy. Like he, he really wasn't. Um, and I had a lot of resentment against him because of, the the other things he was doing in his life that wasn't I did not agree with but he was a man that despite all that loved me and I had learned from that experience too that you know um because for a very long time I believe they were good and bad people because of the way society behaved and treated me in life um 
what I did learn though, that there are good people who do bad things and there are bad people who do good things. <laughs> like it's more complex, you know? Um, so I, I tried to do a mentorship program for girls in the high schools. It was very challenging though, working with the schools. They were, they're very overwhelmed already with everything that they do. So it wasn't working out. Um, we were actually going to do a program this summer for, so instead of doing that, it was a month, that was a, going to be a monthly program. Instead of doing that, we were going to do a, a one-time program in the summer that the girls would come and then listen to mentors throughout the day. But because the coronavirus happened, we weren't able to move forward with that. So, you know, mentorship is something that I really think is important, um, <clears throat> which is why, I don't know if you've followed in Orange County, I advocated for additional funding for children's services. And you'll, you'll hear if you watch, if you, anyone watches any of those videos, you'll hear some of my story too. Another thing that really helped was as a kid, there was this bus that would come around from a church and pick up the kids and take us to church on Sundays. Um, that was, I mean, that ta taught me about God and mor morals and different things that were positive in my life. There was the YMCA that me and the kids we would walk to, um, which was pretty far. Well, maybe, well, then it seemed far. Now it doesn't seem so far living in Orange County because <laughs> everything's so far away. <clears throat> but we would walk to the YMCA and go to the programs there. There was a Boys and Girls Club. <clears throat> and then there was the Big Brother, Big Sister organization, which was very, I got a mentor from there too, which was very helpful. Because I was the oldest one, so I didn't have a big sister. So I loved it. That was amazing for me to have a big sister. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Well, let me ask something that I saw on your website. It <clears throat> mentioned that it says that economic development outreach should be managed by the government. Uh, when it comes to that, what role do you think a Chamber of Commerce should play in that process? Economic development outreach? Yes. Okay, so... When I was working with Full Sail University, one of the, like I said, we would talk to businesses and tell them about the workforce that resources that we had here and why they, it's a good idea to come to Orange County. This is, that was something that was being done by a private organization. You know, Full Sail is a private organization. It's not part of the government or anything, but we took that role to help with economic development here in Orange County. And that is definitely something that a lot of organizations can do here in Orange County, especially the chambers, um, including government too. Like, I feel like we all could play a part in it. And, you know, as the county, I'll say that we're in other counties in Florida, the different commissioners are more engaged and involved in that than in Orange County because we have a mayor system, an elected mayor system, where the mayor has an economic development team under his office. And so he likes to work more with that. Um, I do get involved though, whenever I can. And I have done that, I've worked with his staff to do that. But this is something that I definitely see needs to happen in a bigger scale. It needs to be more deliberate. And I know we, we work with the Orlando Chamber, which we contract out with, the, um, with them and they're supposed to be helping us with that. And we have this whole marketing, advertising thing, going, strategic plan going on with them. But we really need everyone engaged in it. In this area and one thing I really stress too is that we need Osceola County and Seminole County to do some more economic development to bring jobs to their locations because their residents are driving into Orange County for work and then clogging up our roads <laughs> and I keep saying you want to you want to help our transportation problems Seminole County and Osceola County need more jobs <laughs> so that they stop driving into Orange County because uh, they're not paying for the taxes to improve our roads <laughs> Um, so that's, you know, we all really need to work together and we all need to, I don't really want to focus on financial incentives too, to bring businesses here, 
because it doesn't really work. Once those incentives are over, these companies usually leave. So they need a reason to come here that's gonna keep them here long-term, not just because they got a short-term financial benefit. And we have a lot to offer here, we really do. And it's really not, I feel like it's not marketed enough, it's not talked about enough, and we have a lot of pride here, but I don't think we have, we have way more pride in what we have to offer for businesses to come here, different economies. and industries. Because like I said, we do have a lot to offer. Well, Emily, thank you so much. Is there anything that you would like to add before we wrap this up? Um, no, I think um, hopefully you all know who I am and what I'm about. Um, <laughs> and if, if anyone in my I'll say in my district because I can't handle everybody in Orange County, Seminole County, Osceola, but if anyone in my district who has a business and needs any assistance with the COVID-19 that's happening um, or struggling because of the situations we're going through, please reach out to my office. Well, thank you so much. That is Emily Bonilla. She's running for County Commissioner District 5 serving Orange County. She is one of our candidates at the East Side Regional Hobnob. Our virtual hobnob is happening on June 30th, starting at 5.30, and we will start putting up our candidate virtual interviews coming soon on esrhobnob.com with a lot more information. So be ready for that up and coming. Thank you so much, Emily. Ha everyone have a wonderful day. Great, thank you, you too.